Welcome to our section on vitamin A. So the functions of vitamin A include functioning with vision, with growth and maintenance, and that basically means it's going to help with replacing the body linings, uh, such as the skin. It assists with the both uh, growth of bones and even the teeth, and it does help with immunity. Vitamin A deficiency can lead to problems with vision, growth and maintenance, uh, conditions of the skin such as keratinization, and immunity, so decreased immunity. I think most people know, are most familiar with the connection between vitamin A and vision. When this is an eye, and this is the cornea out here, we look at that, you think of the pupil here, the cornea, and then this is the retina back here. When UV light comes into the eye, passes through the cornea, and that's one of the functions of vitamin A. It helps maintain the cornea, the sheath of the cornea, and it also helps maintain uh, the retina. But specifically, as light comes through and hits the back of the retina, it's actually going to uh, hit a pigment called rhodopsin. And rhodopsin is responsible for sensing those low light situations. And when the UV light comes through, it actually you know, breaks apart rhodopsin, and vitamin A is part of rhodopsin. That, that function, or kind of that breaking apart of that molecule, sends a signal to the brain, so the brain perceives the light that is coming in um, to the eye. Vitamin A, a little bit of vitamin A is lost, and retinol is the active form of vitamin A, and then has to be regenerated. So you need that vitamin A there to regenerate this rhodopsin that's essentially going to you know, sit out here in the retina. So let's take the example of walking around at night and your eyes are somewhat adjusted to the dark. And you can see, but someone flips on a light and all of a sudden it's just a, this bright white. But then everything, it takes you a minute and then it, you know, a few seconds and then you can see again your eyes adjust back to the dark. Well that is rhodopsin being bleached out by the light, that's what they call it, bleaching out, but it sends a signal to the brain, so it's almost overloaded with uh, blindness, um, you know, a white light, but there's enough vitamin A active to regenerate that ro rhodopsin and then bring in whatever little light is in the room and allow you to return to your vision. If you're vitamin A deficient, one of the first signs is night blindness, and what happens is there ends up being a lag time so light goes in and hits the back of the retina, it hits the rhodopsin, you have the bleaching, so you see the white, but if there's not enough vitamin A available to that retinol, which is what we need, retinol, A-L, uh, to regenerate the rhodopsin, then it's going to take a lot longer to regain vision. So that's one of the first signs. I just want to make a quick mention of keratinization. The keratin is a protein that is in skin structures. And uh, this is a, a microscopic view of keratin. But when the skin linings aren't changing over, and I mean, most of your body linings are constantly being rebuilt and broken down all the time, but when you don't have that available because vitamin A is in part of that maintenance, that turnover, then the keratin tends to build up and you can actually get a really lumpy, bumpy, thick skin through, throughout all of the skin, and that's another sign of, of vitamin A deficiency. Now, vitamin A toxicity, you don't see that often, um, but it actually, vitamin A is considered the most toxic of all the vitamins. Uh, we used to lump A and D together, but we found out vitamin D deficiency is, um, is pretty rare. I mean, sorry, vitamin D toxicity is pretty rare, Vitamin A toxicity can result in skin rashes, hair loss, hemorrhage, fractures, liver failure, uh, and even death. And what happens with vitamin A toxicity, it's not so much from food. And we'll go over the food sources next. But it's a combination of supplementation and fortification. And that gets people to the upper limit. Remember I said you don't really need to get vitamin A every single day. It needs to be averaged out. Um, your intake maybe over a weekly period of time. Uh, but if you're constantly eating fortified foods with vitamin A and then you're popping a supplement on top of that, then you do have a chance of having a vitamin A toxicity. So vitamin A is the, even though it's not common, it is potentially the most toxic vitamin. Now, beta-carotene is a 
precursor to vitamin A. So that means it is changed into vitamin A once it gets into the body. And beta carotene it has a it's like a twofold effect. Beta carotene itself is an antioxidant, a phytonutrient. We discussed this um, um, early on in, in the class. But and it's that pigment in plants. We we think of carrots. We think of that orange color. Um, but it's in the family of those carotenoids. Uh, once it's in the body, it can be changed to vitamin A. And one of the keys of beta carotene is it's not absorbed as at a high of rate as vitamin A is, or um, and that's the animal forms. And beta, beta carotene only occurs in plants, whereas vitamin A sources occur in animals. So it's not as strong, I should say, although it has a separate action, that phytonutrient action is not going to be uh, absorbed and have the same activity as an animal source of vitamin A. So think of beta carotene as a plant source of vitamin A, but a weaker source, and then um, vitamin A from animal foods as a, I say, more potent source would be a better way of thinking about it. So you actually won't find actual vitamin A in animal, I mean, in plant foods. It only occurs in animal foods. Now, because of this, um, you know, beta carotene is just one of the carotenoids, and some of the other carotenoids are going to be converted into vitamin A. That they found out that there are many, I should say, conversion rates that not all are, um, are equal. Uh, for example, if you had one gram, um, microgram of retinol that is uh, equivalent to about two micrograms of beta carotene in oil. Uh, but if, because beta carotene is fat soluble, so it needs fat to be absorbed. But it comes in a lot of foods, such as a carrot, which doesn't have that much oil. So if you consume it with a, say, just a dietary beta carotene like in a carrot, it's, um, it's a one to 12 rate. So it's a one twelfth of the actual dose compared to um, a retinol, and it's because it's not absorbed well um, and it doesn't have as high a bioavailability, uh, bioavailability in the body. Now, uh, there are other dietary, uh, pro we call them pro-vitamin A uh, carotenoids. Uh, I just want you to think of them as less absorbed, less active. You don't need to know the conversion rates, the 1 to 2 or 1 to 12. Um, but I do want you you know, especially when you look at the retinol activity units, um, equivalence is because the animal sources are going to give a more potent form of vitamin A than the plant sources or the, the pro-vitamin A carotenoids, which are essentially precursors in the body to vitamin A because they are absorbed, um, less of it is absorbed and it's less active in the body. So you'll see international units um, sometimes, and this used to make everything equal. It didn't matter if you were getting vitamin A from, say, a beef liver or you're getting a beta, car um, beta carotene from a carrot. They considered everything to be equal, and they found out that's actually not uh, the case. So the international units are not as accurate. So where, where are these sources that you're coming from. Well, retinol is kind of this yellow fat soluble substance. We think of it coming from um, things like beef liver, whereas the pro-vitamin A carotenoids are from plant sources. You know, anything that's orange or, you know, even an orange or red is going to be your red bell pepper, or your cantaloupe, um, I think of sweet potatoes. Now, carotenoids, remember, they're plant pigments. They're also phytonutrients, and this is not a food picture. Um, this happens to be uh, the Grand Prismatic Spring uh, from the National Park Service. This, I mean, this is a, is this just an amazing picture or what? But look at, at this brilliant red, these red colors in here. These are carotenoids. This is how strong that pigment is, how bright and brilliant it is. I just wanted to demonstrate how powerful the pigment was, and of course I just like this picture. So this is the end of our section on vitamin A.